Welcome back, everyone, to our lore episodes about Act 1. Uh, this is part two of our series, and I'm Nathaniel, the DM. I'm Madison, I play Fern, the half Fort cleric. I'm Piper, I play Sylvia Amir, the elf divination wizard. And we'll re- come b- right back at the mark of leaving Elix Cross and taking your ocean journey across. Uh, not a lot happened here. Uh, but here's a few things that I did have listed that you could have happened, because I do believe I rolled for some random events. Um, I do believe this one happened, is that Pond had been sparred with Let. Um, yes. They had a... Who won? I believe it was Pana Ben. That sounds right. Yeah, I think that's about right. The Our technical officer is giving me the nod. Yeah, that is correct. Um... There was, uh, Sylvia could only do this one, which is you could study with Valpathis because he was there as well. Um, and you could have gotten a free spell exchange between the two of you. Um. I feel like that did happen. It did happen. I can't remember which spell I got from him, but I know it happened. Um, there was sailing lessons with the captain, so Gorfak could have gotten this one. Um, as she is a ocean druid. Right, she's a she's a water genasi. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, and then druid of the circle coast. of the coast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then uh, there uh, you could do a storytelling between anyone. So anyone who wanted to tell a story, they could during this moment. Yeah, we haven't um, exactly been doing great on getting inspiration. We don't really <laughs> tell stories a lot. I was <laughs> still in the learning curve of how do you role play? How do you be a character? I was talking way too much because I've done this before, so I was trying to shut up and let y'all happen. And it it comes up in throughout the, the story so far. I don't feel like anything has been left out as of right now, narratively. Um, I think you kind of all are aware of one another at this point. Uh, the next one was... At this point. Well, there were some things that didn't come up until Lux, but we'll save that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sylvia and Fern would get this one is you got in a message uh, sending one would have been for Sylvia would have been from your sister Aerith um, and then uh, Fern yours was from Dimitri of course but I don't think either the, did those happen no I didn't get a message nope. yeah nope again these were I believe it was like a it was two days so yeah, I think it was only like two occurrences and you just happen to roll one or two inches with the first two on there. And then um, there's a dream version which Let would have gotten with the dream guy. And uh, the, the, the gray robbing, that's right. <laughs> oh, you, I think you guys get, did get this one because uh, it was the, this is the first time that I think we saw the digging up a grave was probably a bad idea moment. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And then uh, you got a uh, vision of a meteor falling. That's right. Because we saw that and we were like, that's fucking wild. And then it didn't come up again until it was really important that it came up again. Right. But it wasn't that long after that it came up again. Yeah. So from there, you guys went to Astro Bluff. And uh, you arrived right during this Lantern Festival. The that they were having and it happens uh, yearly nothing too special about it they light lanterns and to the the god uh alden which is the god of light he is a saint and them? basically they just light lanterns for um food, there's games i definitely yeah. remember there being like food and games yeah, yes, this is. You can make your own lantern. Right, because I rolled a nat 20 to do it. There was a. Uh, this is another one of those where you, there's several areas you could go to. And then, when you. Uh, depending on where you go, different things were happening uh, throughout it. There were a total of five different sections of time that was happening during the festivities. So there was the carnival games, which had many, many different ones, and you could win different things out of it. There was the market, which had a variety of items different each time you went. 
Um, you've gone to the lantern shrine itself, which is crafting the lan- your own lantern um, and being able to light that eventually. There was uh, the plaza where of cuisine, which is where you could get um, various foods. And then there's just the outskirts of it if you wanted to be a stick in the mud and just hang on the outside. I think Orfrak went to the outskirts at one point, but I don't remember what she saw. <laughs> I think um, where she and Fern had a conversation. Maybe. About like, you two guy. did. And Gorfrak was all suspicious and was like, hey, Fern, hold this silver coin. And Fern was like, okay. And she's like, do you feel anything? And Fern's like, tingles a little bit and handed it back. And Gorfrak was suspicious. Yeah. Trying to see anything interesting in here. Uh, I know the big point of that time was Fern and Sylvia both saw a suspicious meteor. I think it was green. I thought it was uh, rainbowish. Yeah, it was like remember. a uh, as the way raw magic is described, it is typically when not active, a like like blue, like teal, turquoise kind of color, but when activated, it kind of makes this chromatic kind of oh, okay, gotcha. uh, effect. Right. Raw magic came up again. Yeah. Suspicious meteor. We don't know what it means. We also saw the Grand Herald for the first time, Liliana. I- Yes. yes, I vaguely remember you saying something like, this wasn't a good sign. I don't know if I'm making that up. Um, I don't I don't have anything in my notes okay. relating to that. Um, it might have been something I learned later and I was ta- doing some research or something. Yeah, I mean, she is, uh, that's where she resides. That's just, she resides in Astro Bluff. I mean, Astro Bluff is a large city. Um, not as large as some of the ones you've been kind to recently, but this is of significant size in the area. I remember the Grand Herald was like a, a footnote. It was like, oh, that's cool. And we didn't think it'd be important. And then, you know, shit went down in Lux. We became relevant to the Everything. wider <laughs> continent and we met a bunch of famous people. Um, here is a few things that you might find interesting. Um, okay. the- uh, Zena Felwyn was a potion maker and artifice you guys encountered, but kind of forgot about. And we'll actually talk about it later because you encountered her for a second time. That's from Say her name again? Something. Zena Felwyn. Does she live hmm. in the mountains for something? No. no. Y'all, we'll, we'll come back to that when we get back to Lux. Uh, oh boy. But we're leaving. Oh, uh, when we're, uh, we're in Lux. We're yeah, when we Lux, talk about Lux. And another yeah, yeah. character, which you met briefly in Lux as well, is uh, someone named Scholar Vu, and he was a kobold. Yes, was he the guy that wanted us to find that um, inscription or whatever in the catacombs? Correct, he did. Right. Uh, you could have met him while he was here, and he would have given you a different task. Oh. Um... I think that's all in terms of like really interesting people that you encountered later anyway. Uh, yeah. I think some of you got the peppermint elixirs, which um, is certainly interesting in terms of, I believe it turns your uh, hair red and white and it tastes pepperminty. It's uh, a magical item. Yeah. That's kind of all that happened. And you guys, uh, as you said, you stayed for the night. Um, the meteor hit, uh, Sylvia's card was spent being able to identify it. Cause she just was exploring at night cause she can, cause oh. she has the time. And so it was spent then. Otherwise she would not have seen it. And you went unaware of it. You know, uh, when you talk about like, you could have done this. I get super suspicious about what are you planning? What are you planning? I know. That evil grin. Um, and all I can think about is the fact that the card was spent for that, and I didn't try to figure out more about the meteor after the fact is concerning. Like, I know I initially did some research, but I wasn't really getting anywhere, but... You never know what's going to happen, so... Yeah. We didn't think uh, it would be that important. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I will say that my notes for that specific the uh, card of wisdom, it is, if you fail a perception check that is really important, you succeed on it. Okay. Fair enough. There you go. Uh, okay. We head to the Redwood Forest. Um, funny enough, the right off the bat, uh, on my notes, it says, 
uh, for Sylvia, use the wisdom card if she fails the perception roll. This roll is for the meteor landing. <laughs> so. You were prepared, man. Yeah. Um, you, this is your kind of another section of time where you kind of explored this forest. You just had to get through it. Um, yep. Gorfrak. Nightwood, but not fast. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, I don't think it took you too long. No, this one was didn't. a little bit more relaxed. Well, uh, this one wasn't haunted by, you know, crazy nightmare lady. Or corrupt druids trying to bring back the crazy nightmare lady. <laughs> See, and that's uh, when we saw the meteor. Like the, the rock the broken animal. open. The, I want to touch on an important detail before we talk about that big plot point. Which is that we discovered that the druid circle that was supposed to be here was no longer yes. in this forest. And that's right. Poor little wolf. He was like a friend of one of them who was waiting for them to come back. And Gorfrek was all like, ah, shit, the circles are disappearing. We were all like, what? Yep, and he, uh, and you promised him that you would find his friend. We still haven't found his friend, and I feel really bad about it. Yeah, so he's still waiting for his friend to return. Um, we, uh, Gorfrek encountered uh, a red bird called a Wisna, and right. now has that as a little pet companion. With what her, Winston. 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 The Wisna. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Um, you guys countered a pack of wolves, but avoided that. Um, and this was when you encountered the Griffin Riders and the Meteor, who you guys did not get to this location fast enough, otherwise you could have investigated it before they did. Yeah, we found where the meteor that Sylvia saw the night before impacted in the forest, and there was a yes. bunch of fancy people there, and we were like, oh, shit. Yes. I don't remember how I convinced them to let me look at it a little. Like, I was able to look at it a little bit, and then, then they, like, I don't know. I can't remember exactly. I think you just rolled really good with uh, Persuasion. Yeah, I probably. Think it, I think it's just what it was. Um, and, uh, they like, you're also relatively well-known among them, just because right. of your status, so it's you have some weight in the situation. I don't think the rest of them could have. Right, and the fact that it was actually we should probably a wizard and not just not just like a martial fighter who's a noble. <laughs> right, you're well educated, but the Griffin Riders. We should probably tell people what those are. Yes, they don't know. Mister DM, do you want to explain? This is your world. Yeah. Uh, so the Griffin Riders, they are part of the. The king and country, in that they are kind of like the king's personal army or bodyguards, if you want to say it. Um, they are a separate branch of their government entirely, and they uh, basically have free reign to do whatever they would like. Um, it's just within the king's purview. Uh, their leader is Alistair Cromwell. He is the the knight commander, which they met here. They have uh, Duncan Altus, who is the, their second in command. Um, he was not here, and then they have their spy master, Allison. She only goes by that. Who is their again their spy master? Who you also meet here, and she's kind of a mm -hmm. uh, magical uh, proficiency and spellcaster. Um, and they be more familiar with them later on. Yeah, had <laughs> no idea. Had no idea. <laughs> yeah, they kind of act as a an extension of the king's influence. So if he needs something done that's important, he will send them to do it. Uh, as such, they were tasked with uh, security during the festivities because of how important it was. Because the Terminate of Ascension happens every 100 years. Yep. Very rare event, at least for most of us, looking at the elves. Mm. Second one I've been to. <laughs> um... So the Griffin Riders were sent out to look at this weird meteor, which when Sylvia was able to get close and look at, is that when she realized, oh, it might have something to do with raw magic? Or I believe so. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But we didn't know anything about it. Like, I believe right. damage, it was like, very much the only at this level would have been raw magic and anything. When it was crashing down, you could just identify that it was. Mm -hmm. Right. Think but I don't think I gleaned much more from that no, that's investigation. All we learned there, it would come up again. Little did we know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, from that point, 
I believe it was, I don't remember the chronological of this, these two events, but we're just going to go with uh, Lionrith is when you they first encountered him after you left the forest. It was right after we left the forest. Yeah. Yes, right after we left the forest, I was the only one that spotted him. He was chasing a toad. Yep, he was chasing a toad. Um, I started that was kind of it. I was just, yeah, yeah. He was asked, so and he friendly. wasn't he wasn't really doing anything. He was just kind of wandering around. I was like, "Well, do you want to travel with us?" And he was like, "Sure." So then he became part of the merry group of misfits. <laughs> I think our original purpose was, well, we'll help you get to where you need to go. Because we were like, this is like a lost child. Right. And then we realized he has memory issues and doesn't remember where he needs to go. Or anything about right. him other than that. His name is Lionrith. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember we started asking him questions. And he was like, I don't know. I don't know. We're like, well, this is concerning. You're going to come with us. then." <laughs> Pretty much. And... From there, you went to, I think it was your first encounter with the Tabaki Traders. Yes. That is so you met right. Dream of Days. Misty Feather. Uh, Misty Feather, yep. The, 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 the duo of them and how their little service works in that if you give them an orb, they can give you a random magic item or you can purchase one that's on display. But when you leave, you don't know if those items will still be there when you return. Right, because they're like right. interplanar travelers. Yep. Heavily implied. Pretty sure Missy Feather is like one of those rangers who's got the interplanar guardian thing. I don't remember what the subclass is called. I think it's a Horizon Walker. Is that it? Horizon Walker. Something like that. Um, they were cool. Really cool. Yeah, so you encountered them, and then you moved on, and you didn't really buy anything yep. from them. And Gorfrax smashed the orb for some boots, some like boots. some boots that kept. Yeah, she got uh, the uncommon boots that like give you resistance to cold and whatnot. Right. Oh, right. you know the other thing that I remember from the traders is uh, I was I Fern. Fern was talking to Misty Feather outside and was like, "So you mentioned like this was your family?" And he was like, "Yes, but no, they're not actually like my blood family. They're just big. yes, they're like found family." And Fern was like, "That's a thing." Oh, <laughs> and ha and that started the whole like tiny orphan child realizing maybe I don't need to find my actual family. But we have yeah, and Frank and Sylvia will be my mothers. <laughs> Sylvia is not very motherly, and Gorfrak is more milky. I know, but you are responsible adults. Yeah, the um. They all uh, travel in a kind of a collective uh, group who they aren't, like I said, they aren't direct family members. They're kind of just brought together and they kind of act as a family-esque um, with their leader, who's uh, they designate with the name of Elvis' father, who is called Owl, which I don't believe you met, but they, they, did, uh, they did talk about him briefly. Um, then you have, we have Dream of Day. She is the person who is tasked with um, crafting and opening and dealing with all the magic related things. Uh, depending on who she's speaking with, she could be referred to as uh, eldest daughter um, or eldest sister. Um, same thing going goes for Misty Feather, as he is uh, about the same age as her. Um, those are the only three of them that you met while you were there. But there was a little brother, too, wasn't there? Yes, there are uh, uh, some younger ones, but they are not visible. Little guys. They're just little guys. Yeah. Gosh, after that, it was pretty much, quote, quote unquote, straight to Gloom Portal, right? Or yes, yes, except uh, we ran into Katrina. Uh, Katrina. Her name is Katarina. Katarina. But Yes. You all proceed to believe she is uh, Katrina, and I don't think it helps that her full name is Katarina Rainsnarl, so it's... <laughs> really evokes the image help. of a hurricane. So that poor lady got her name messed up, but that's where you encountered her. Uh, you also encountered the the Dream Hunter, I believe. Yes, Hunt I can't uh, remember what the suffix is. I know it's Dream something. Yeah, I'm trying to find where it was. 
Yes. Uh, yeah. Dream Hunter. I'm going to write that down. So, you head over to Gloom Portal. Uh, you're, it basically hunted you guys as you're trying to get there. You actually also had to fight some crocodiles. But, I remember that. <laughs> um, as you get got there, you realize you really couldn't fight this thing. So, you rushed over to Gloom Portal. Basically, kind of just been standing outside the city, kind of preventing anyone from entering or leaving. Um, Gloom Portal isn't a very well off town. It is kind of in a swamp. It is uh, an old fortress during the Silent War. It was kind of like the last kind of like large bastion in battle that kind of led to the final collapse of that war and with the Creation Coalition winning. Um, It was uh, named the Battle of Jardaria as the sorceress and a lieutenant of the Silent King resided there. Right. Before her defeat. Right. I remember you telling us that and me writing the, these notes down, having no idea we were about to face Fredaria. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we haven't gotten there yet, Piper. Yeah, uh, and the big thing why it's called Loom Portal is that there's a large portal actually in the center of it, which is now inactive, that uh, it was constructed by the Silent King and named after the sorcerers who basically protected it um so yeah and that's kind of what the city is and you guys all had some fun adventures while you were there yeah fun fun i remember we went to that random inn and then these two people i can't remember their names and then i came up to me specifically and were giving me a hard time well here's what happened is we got into the city and we kind of like entering the gates had a choice of going to the nicer side of town or the poorer side of town. And the only person, the person who took charge, who really was curious about Gloom Portal, was Fern. Right. And Fern was raised on the streets. So no, I think part of it was because there were so many half-elves in the city, or not half-elves, sorry, half-orcs uh-huh. specifically in this town. You were like, I want to go explore the half-orcs. So that's yeah, partially why we to went to that. about the people like her. So she gravitated towards the shady side because that's what she knew. And it didn't end well. Huh. Yeah, uh, you went off to try to go off by yourself during the, the night. Uh, oh, Sylvia, in and- ever vigilant, wanted to yeah, go with you. No, no, no. Here's what happened. I believe we were at the inn. Sylvia was still downstairs like at, in, the, in the tavern portion or whatever and Ferd tried to sneak out like several times and <laughs> Sylvia saw her every time yeah yeah that's exactly basically what happened and you just ended up just tagging along unbeknownst yes. to the rest of you that the criminal organization known as the family um, has a large prominence here and uh, they're not too happy with Fern because they actually have a um, difficult past with her and they wanted her to make up for those past deeds against them. Uh, right. And it was 100% and- the situation of Fern is like, here, put this ratty rag over your fine clothes. And it didn't even cover hey. everything. Hey, hey, you're the noble who said, I want to come with. And I'm not I know. Again, I, I should have just with. knocked you out. It would have been easier. So our firm was like, well, I have my favorite cloak. Don't use, lose it. You can use it for now. Now, Sylvia's taller than Fern, so it didn't work particularly efficiently since Fern's cloak wasn't a long cloak to begin with. Yeah. And so they went to the pit. Correct. Which is like... so. See, Fern, Madame Chartreuse. Yeah, Fern had asked the barkeep, yo, if you want to find somebody in this town, who do you go t- to tell you where they are? And the barkeep was like, Madame Chartreuse. And she was like, okay, sure. And so we, I went to the pit. Sylvia tagged along. I'm pretty sure we did some, like, shading around the streets looking for where yes. to Yes, 100%. Uh, so there, here are the different locations you could have gone to. There was a church dedicated to Althos. Not Alth- yeah, Althos. Um, the Saint of Order. Uh, there's the portal itself, if you wanted to go take a look at that. Um, there was the ruins and slums. 
Um, there was what's called the Great Standing Wall, uh, the Adaban Towers, uh, the Fortress of Solitude, which is the castle, and the, the Pit, which is where all the criminal activities are held, and the newer part of town called New Year's Resolution, which they're trying to rebrand the city as, but not doing too great. I don't remember entirely how things went trying to get into, like, to see Madame Chartreuse in the pit, but I'm pretty sure we walked around until we heard the passphrase or something. Yeah, I think you just asked someone, and they eventually, it's just enough, like, asking that same guy, he just gave up and just gave it to you and then ran off. Um, <laughs> we knew that we were screwed. We didn't know we were screwed. We were too dumb. Yeah, uh, it was in yeah. a shoe store, or a hardware store, or something. Something like that. Yeah, it was a tool store, if I remember correctly. Um, it was a secret passage in the walls. Yes, and you went in there, and then went into basically the heart of their base, and they're like, "Okay, so thanks for bringing us a valuable uh, hostage for uh, the blackmail and whatever we want to do with that noble family." And oh, also, you have a debt you need to pay us. So, in my defense, yeah, I didn't know Madame Chartreuse was part of the family. Number one, number two, Fern didn't think that she was important enough. But number one, no one leaves the family. You can't leave your family. Apparently not. Apparently not. We'll get to that whole story because I had to tell it to the party shortly thereafter. So I'll yes, yes, you did. I'm pretty sure Sylvia tried to set everything on fire and it didn't work. We started fighting and we very you quickly realized. Fighting. Okay, well, Sylvia wasn't about to just be taken as a hostage without a fight. I don't know about Fern. So Fern's a peace cleric. She's nonviolent. She ran into a lot of fights. I mean, you ran me into a shit ton of fights. <laughs> Anyways, very quickly realized that fighting was going to be futile. There were just too many people, so you know. Then I was, I'm pretty sure I was knocked out, and I don't know what happened from there. I know Sylvia got out somehow. She didn't she got captured? No, well, yeah, I was captured. She was released before Fern. Yeah, uh, be with the party's help. Right. Yep. They negotiated that. Yeah. Um. As just some additional because I was able to find it. The name of the store was the Tool Depot, and <laughs> the uh, the code was the there was a half work that asks what lovely weather we're having, and the correct answer was to say it would be better if it was cloudy so I can wear my boots. Huh. The things we have in our notes. Um, gosh, how did the party figure out where we went? I don't know, and <laughs> so I think it just was just looking around, just of asking, okay, did you meet like this person or that person? And I think it just was, I think a lot of lucky checks that kind of went into it. I think there's also, I don't know, it might have been one of you told them to go like talk to your friends. I think that was kind of a, a situation, as well as you also had a dragon companion with you, so they're kind of like. They are aware of you in the town, and they're like, Ew. that's another something valuable as well. Um, so eventually, I believe it was Gorfrak who dealt with negotiations and was able to get Sylvia freed, but not Fern. Right. And so Fern, you were given your task uh, when you got to Lux that you uh, were to steal a key called the Key of Honor. And then my debt would be, quote, Hey, you, you were free to go. Uh, yeah, they gave me that, knocked me out, and dumped me back on the streets. And right. And then we went back to the inn, and I had to explain the whole history of Fern and the family and why. Right, because you tried to lie, and Sylvia immediately saw Fern and was like, that absolutely was not. This all happened in one of our only in-person games, too. Yes. I had to, I had to deal with the full force of your gaze. In person, which it wasn't enough to stop you from going, though. So, because this is a lore video, do you want me to just briefly go over what happened to Fern? Um, 
not this time because I think we're going to talk about it uh, in a separate video that's just talking about Fern. Oh, um, this Lord. is that's terrifying. This is just specifically for the story and well, where you guys went. Fern explained her history with the family, and everybody was really mad at her. Yes. Also, it should be noted that Sylvia's family also own or owns not owns, I guess, but it's part of their region, the town where Fern grew up and did some sketchy things. So, might have killed a guy. Yeah. Killed a man. I'm yeah. Fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Great. It's fine. Uh. So yeah. Um. You guys did all that, and at the same time, you still couldn't leave the city. And you're running out of time, you're trying to figure out how to get out, and so you turned yourself towards the leader of this town, who is Orm Draenor, who is yep. the uh, son in a far down the list of inheritance of the family, and of his specific family, noble family, mm -hmm. and stopped for him to help, who uh, offered to assist you using his teleportation circle if you helped him with something. Which yes. we'll talk about next time in part three. So, uh, we'll see you next time. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>